We're down the road on this crazy journey and there's still a lot up in the air. One thing I do know is we're building a complete custom body on this car. We're just going about it in a slightly different way. Moved into a new lab, got a new workshop. The whole idea with this room is that you have plenty of clean floor space. One of the biggest challenges in everywhere I've worked is that there's always stuff, <laughs> and I'm always trying to decrease the stuff. I got my tools, I got my dog, ready to rock. The whole idea was getting this in the room, is now we are in the artist's studio. I got the car up on these little roller dollies, we can spin it around. Get up high, down low, nothing in the way. Because really, that's it. You gotta have that line, you know? It's gotta look good. Victor and I were up at Gene Winfield's. He had a whole bunch of fiberglass bodies, and I knew we had to go in that direction with this car. But Gene was molding cars that already exist, like a 51 Merc or a Ferrari F40. But we don't have that option. We have to create the car first. It's just like this car model. You know, imagine we had a full-size 57 Chevy and we made a mold on it. We would end up with a car body just like this. We have to create our car body first. The cool thing is we can use any car part we want. We can customize it, hand shape it, whatever. It just has to be strong enough to build a mold on. We can move fast. We can make changes on the fly. We've never done anything like this before. I'm super excited. It's just gonna be a ton of work. The whole idea with setting up the car in the shop like this is it's gonna be a big debate between Victor and I as to how it turns out in the end. Set up these fenders just as a representation of something over the rear wheels. I know Victor loves the idea of this really low trough. You'll see the engine and the other components in here. This is directly in the way. First things first, I wanna get into the rear portion of this design. Because it's a mid-engine, we both wanna show that engine off, and there's a bunch of stock sheet metal I wanna get out of the way, come up with some concepts for the back end. So this is an element of structure. I'm just gonna make it look way cooler. See now clearly the strut tower in here. And if you look under the hood of any front engined you know, car for the track, they'll have this flange that bolts on here and then a cross brace. So already you can see it's just, when you're looking at the engine, it's way better than looking at this big divider wall. What do you think? Dude's always on board, you know? He's three years old, he's getting himself into trouble, banging his head into stuff. He's always putting his nose in my business, and uh, I'm sure he's totally liking the smell of the fine German machinery. We don't get a lot of that, and I think he's just taking it all in. Hey, what happened to your face? You were such a cute puppy. You look like a boxer. Getting all this metal cut out of the way, it's exactly what I was looking for. The engine will be exposed, but now I gotta put some structure in there and I got a couple ideas how to make that happen. I know what Victor and I are going for in this portion of the car, and that is looking down into this and seeing a lot of, a lot of cool stuff. Just like with all the supercars, whether we have glass or it's just open, uh, it's gotta look cool. Right now it looks like a bunch of sheet metal that we cut out. Try to schnazzy it up a little. Now that I got all this metal cut out, my idea is to put in like an upper strut support. It'd be easy just to throw a piece of tube in there, but I want it to look cool. Race cars, they try to lighten everything up. I'm gonna do the same here. So that's the thing, I got the center marked here, and I'm just gonna go every two and a half inches and scribe across, to, so six and a half to nine. I'll just center punch, drill all these with a hole saw, and it'll just look like a nice lightened race car style bracket. I'm just gonna pre-drill these with a quarter inch hole and then hole saw it up to, I think about one inch, whatever looks appropriate. 
There you go. Now you got a bunch of small holes. Now I'm gonna make a bunch of big holes. The hole saw leaves a bunch of kind of scratch marks and loose pieces of metal hanging off, so the die grinder cleans all that up. There's a few different fittings on that tool. It goes from coarse to fine. In the end, you end up with something that looks like a piece of jewelry. Well, it just looks kind of like a... Uh... If this thing's sitting on a table, you don't know what the heck it is. Is it a musical instrument? Is it a weapon? Is it an upper strut support bar? Who knows? So the last thing I want to do is put a finish on it. Eastwood's got this cool surface finishing tool. It provides like a brushed finish. You hear like brushed aluminum, brushed stainless, you see it on your refrigerator or something like that. And I'm gonna use that on this piece of tubing. That is pretty cool. Now I'm just gonna weld into the car, figure out how that floor area is gonna be raised up. This piece needs to be super strong, so I made these gussets and I can weld them in on each side of the shock towers. The next step is twofold. I need to create somewhere to mount all of this rat's nest wire harness stuff and create something that looks cool that follows the design Victor and I are looking for. Paper templates are the time-tested thing for sheet metal fabrication, so that's exactly what's happening here. It's always easier to cut some cardboard than to waste metal. You got a little something hanging off your chin there. I love the idea of what we're doing here. It's because my thing with any hot rod is you got this big giant engine, you're seeing mechanical stuff. And that's what we're doing. We're chopping the car down so that the engine components can transfer to the outside of the vehicle. And that's cool. Just laying this cardboard in totally cleans up the rear view of the car. I'm pretty sure this floor shape's a keeper, but I need to come up with some kind of representation of how the walls are gonna turn down from the fenders. And then my 3,000 pound paper folding machine. It's always easy to pick out what looks terrible. You just gotta figure out how to sweeten it up, and that's exactly what this envisioning tool is going to provide. Ready to show this to Victor. We got a lot to discuss about the designs in this rear end. Ian. Hey, man. You found the place. Yeah, I found it, man. What's going on? Wow, place looks good. Oh, yeah. That's the thing I was saying, you know, new building, new project. You know, I walk into the new shop, man. Ian's like all peppy, ready to go, just like he's inspired again. And now I'm starting to get inspired going, hey, move over. I'm coming in. That looks good. The lines are lining up. Yeah, it's all just kind of concept, you know, something to discuss. Aside from it looking so cool with structure, you know, these are springs under here. They're gonna wanna fold in. So I just support it like you would any race car, right? Came in with some gussets, really grabbed that. Ian just telling me all this stuff and I'm not really like taking it in. I'm like looking at the car, starting to focus on what else could we do to this thing? And he's talking and talking and you talk all the engineering you want to talk. I'm thinking design, baby. I love that you got it down low. This boxer was round. Exactly. Now you, we could achieve, you know, whatever vents or take the points down. You know, all this aside, all we have is some structure back here and this surface height. We need to figure out what the look of the back of the car is. You know, you're describing some kind of sculpted thing. All I've established is measuring points. I mean, I can't do anything more until we figure out what the look is. You know, what the heck is you bring in uh, for this part? The mistake Ian made was he said, hey, you could bring anything you want. So, I mean, you can't tell me that. It's another piece to this puzzle. You know, 911 oh. Carrera bumper. Okay, I thought it was something you picked up off the street. Oh, I see, yeah, Porsche 911. A little concerned because he brings in a Porsche bumper. We're working with a Porsche. We're trying to make something that doesn't look like anything out there. So I don't know. I'm a little skeptical. I think it's going to be too wide, but hey, you know what? What else is new, right? <laughs> well, it's exactly what I'm doing here. You're just stacking stuff and seeing what works. And wow, that's freaking that... wide enough, man. Look at that. You know what? That thing ties right into the depth of the tires and everything. Completely. 
I mean, it's one thing to just say, oh, well, oh yeah, it's a Porsche, it'll fit, but you got these massive tires and it actually works. Once we put this thing up, it was like a revelation. It fit. To just put a replacement Porsche part on it seems like not accomplishing anything, but this is completely different than any Porsche that I've seen. I mean, already I'm seeing lines coming off of this that make the whole back of the car start to appear. I don't know what you're seeing, but I see it's now from cool. this point. Watch, stand here. I'm going to show you what I see already. Now, as you come in here, guess what? These are rolling. Guess where this fender's going? Straight to here. Look at this. Look at how this. This is like a whole imagination station. That's exactly what it is. You know, it's like imagine if we could do this, and it felt like that, but it was more like this, etc. You know, he comes up with this dialogue and I cement some kind of a tangible thing, and then we modify it. What if we just took the Boxster fenders and just mocked them up? Maybe that curved shape can benefit us. You're right. I it... brought everything from the other shop. They're right here. If we're gonna go with this Porsche bumper, it's very round. It's in direct opposition to the faceted edges on the Sterling body. It's got me thinking about a couple other ideas. So you can see it's curved. It definitely takes over from that, but. We put it on. Oh, look at that. <laughs> wow, that's ridiculous. It matches the diameter uh, of the look tire. Look at this thing, huh? Look at this, huh? <laughs> that's pretty crazy. The rear bumper and the fenders are really a huge breakthrough because they're not the end result of what the style of the car is. We just need to create surfaces to sculpt off of. It's exactly what you're describing, man. It's like down, oh, yeah. up, and over. The lines are all there. I mean, now it's an open canvas. We have a lot of depth to work with, so This that's is exactly what I cool. needed, man. I'm gonna show you a couple tape lines that I'm considering with the angle of these walls, because that rear deck portion is quick and easy. The main thing I wanna figure out is when you're looking at the car, what are the proportions? How does this engine bay get closed in? How does it flow into the rear quarter panels? Because that's a huge element of how the rest of the car is gonna be styled. So this is the angle both sides will be at. This will just get moved over, trimmed out. But these are our dimensions, you know? None of this is gonna be visible in the end. This is just gonna be a rolling shape that comes right out of that trough. Ian, what do you think about a slight curve on that? Well, I got the slip roller. Let me put it in there and we'll see. Look at that. Wow. Totally good call. Oh yeah, that changes it from being a file cabinet to a sports car, man. Now you can see it won't be such a tight radius. It's just gonna flow right out over, down into here, and then you already have your fender built. This is exactly what I needed. I was looking for that new thing that I had never tried before, and uh, Victor's going all in on this. It's starting to turn into something really awesome. Well, if you're cool with that, I could build those panels out of metal, and we could figure out what these fenders are gonna look like. I can't wait to come back in tomorrow to see what he does with this. It just inspires me for the next part of this car. I got a whole bunch of more ideas on this car. We just started. Starting to fit up the rear view of the car. And the first thing I wanted to accomplish was getting this driver's compartment separated from the engine compartment. I got this panel in before I could get this structure finished for the side pieces. These tubes here are gonna be the support structure for the side panels we discussed. Victor's bumper idea I think is perfect, but what I had to do was suspend it and center it. I came in with some three quarter inch steel tube and a bunch of small pencil rod, and now the bumper is mounted. This panel here is gonna have a rear window in it, but I don't know how that's gonna look until we get these side walls in. Victor and I are committed to this, so I'm gonna put the floor in and build the sides. I was thinking about some kind of access hatch here with a hinge, pretty techy to build. Victor said, why don't we just part it right on these two braces and this whole center panel just pulls out. I had all this scrap foam insulation outside 
And by setting that up on the insulation, you can just run the jigsaw right through it. I'm gonna do this whole portion of the car in aluminum. My plan is that it's gonna stay with the chassis. It'll never be molded in fiberglass, so I want it to look really bright and cool. That's it. It's a cake. So for now, these are just gonna get screwed down. It may hinge later, I'm not sure. The whole thing with these panels and them being aluminum is that it was my choice that they stay with the car through to the end as a showpiece. So to see them in place is pretty satisfying. Just can never. I need like a holster for my magic marker. I'm like, whoosh. that's it. I'm taking applications now. Anyone familiar with leather work or anything like that? I'm looking for something size quadruple X. Quadruple X so I can grow into it. My senior years. That looks pretty good. I think to set this thing off, I really want to rivet it together. It's going to give it a real industrial strength race car look. But because this is a concept, I'm just going to mock them up with these self-tapping screws. It's a perfect starting point because the hole will later just get riveted back together. There's the last rear pan where the bumper goes. It's just gonna slip right in underneath the other one. I know that this is not the finished product we're looking at, but you gotta start with a good base and that's all this is. This is a background for whatever enhancements Victor comes up with. I came out to the Pomona Swap Meet with Victor. It's one of the largest swap meets there is. It's the go-to place to get what you gotta get. They have everything, including the kitchen sink. That's the deal. It's a full-on treasure hunt. Hey, what do you want for this box of uh, books? I'll take 10 bucks. You'll, you'll get 10 bucks for that. It's my favorite show ever. For those that don't know, Monster Garage was like the show that brought the builders of the world onto television. Anybody who's anybody tried their metal in the Monster Garage. We got the whole kit right here, man. This is gonna teach us how to build a custom car. This is awesome. I think we could just go home now. We're looking for the lights, fenders, Let's just try not to get distracted. There's too much here. I know how you get off on a tangent sometimes. Let's try to stay focused, man. We're on a mission. The main mission today is to just find shapes. You know, anything representing a fender line, a hood line, lights, who knows what's here. That's what it is, a treasure hunt. Now you know where I get all my crazy stuff. Yeah. This is like one of my main places to find all these parts that will fit any car that I got. Or I like how professional their labeling is. I mean, definitely hit a few walls with that spray can style, man. It's too perfect. Here you go. Here's the radius of the front. <laughs> There's a million other shapes in the world. Just because it's an old Plymouth, you know. Try to detach yourself, man. We're on the better. <laughs> Remember. We make old things back into new things, and hey, that car would love to be a supercar. Yeah. When, when it grows up, it wants to be a supercar. I know when we get back to the shop, I'm gonna see that next to it. Check this out. <laughs> I could be Ian Jr. That one's even better than mine. Uh, how do I look? Can't get distracted, man. Stay focused. This is my music, Pink Floyd, Led <laughs> Zeppelin. How much are the gauges? Check out that Manny Mom Jack. <laughs> hey, Dan, how you doing? I'm Victor. Good. Hey, um, hey I know that you want 1,200. I got, all I got is 800 bucks. I know it's, I'm rolling the dice here. What do you think? No. Nine, no? All right, well, we tried. You gotta stay focused. Don't get distracted. No kidding. Hey, I still am a collector of fine art. I know. 
Victor's hearing what I'm saying. He's on the lookout for fenders. He called me over. He says he's got something. There you go, Ian. Check this out. He pulls out these round fenders. I don't think he knew what they were. Right away, I spot them. How much do you want for the fenders? Uh, 60 for both. 60 for both? That's a good deal. The last thing Victor wanted was a Volkswagen involved with this car. Remember, we got rid of the whole chassis. Now he's picking up a couple of VW Bug fenders. He's going right back to where he started. So those are off a of Volkswagen Bug. You said you're trying to get away from the VW stuff, but you know, I'm all about it. Well, I don't know. You don't want Volkswagen, you want a supercar, and then you're pulling out Volkswagen parts. It's like, just because I say every, anything goes doesn't mean anything goes. I'll pick it, you make it fit, that's not my problem. We've already discussed that. <laughs> yeah. Not only that, but walking around, we're in our element. You know, a lot of people who watch the show recognize Victor, and some of them even recognize me, which is even cooler. Man, I like your program, man. Thanks, glad you like it. I like looking at you, you no, know, I own a nursery too, man, like oh, you, man. Oh, where at? Maybe we could do business. Uh, probably uh, Central Glamis area. Oh, yeah. Okay, Glamis. what do you got? You got a lot of native stuff? Desert stuff? Oh, no, All right, no, good. No. We'll do business. We'll do business, we'll, business we'll even trade cars. <laughs> we can even trade right some cars. <laughs> you made my day, man. You made my day. Right on. That's what we're here for. Well, we got books. We got gauges. I got a hat. We got everything but the fenders, man. Bottom line is, this isn't about the world's greatest swap me quest. It's about building cars. You gotta get back to the lab.